Good day to you. Uh, it's a beautiful morning here in Austin, Texas. It's the day before Texas Dreaming, and I'm doing a little practice walkthrough uh, that I will record and share on our blog site. Uh, this talk is on Wall of Zeros, and it's a dashboard technique that you should be using in your organization. Um, it will protect you and make you seem like you have superpowers which you do because you're an awesome admin. Um, so let's get started. My name is Terry Cole. I am founder and executive director of Street Youth Ministry. I'm a two-time Salesforce MVP. I'm on Twitter and there's my email address. Uh, and um, <clears throat> my co-presenter is Devin Moore. He is a uh, graduate of Pep Up Tech. They are an organization that help people of color prepare for a career in Salesforce technology. And I highly recommend hiring their alumni. Uh, Devin is our junior Salesforce admin at Street Youth Ministry. Street Youth Ministry is a day center for homeless young adults. We, I founded it in 2008 and we began using Salesforce in 2012. Um, we started in Austin, and now we're working in San Marcos and New Braunfels as well, and we're coming soon to San Antonio. So all you Texas Dreaming people, uh, we need your support. We need you as a volunteer. Be looking for us soon. We work with homeless young adults, about 80 a week. We provide guidance counseling. The average age is 24. They're very diverse. 33% are women, about a quarter are uh, black, and 20% or so are Hispanic and about half are white. So it's a very diverse group. We have a 100% declarative organization. Um, it's built entirely by us uh, internally. We use packages that allow declarative work to be, to be very easy. I listed some there. We have 10 users, all on Lightning. Um, we use Salesforce to manage everything. So we don't have other spreadsheets. Uh, Salesforce represents our donors, our volunteers, our clients, our followers, everything. So what is a wall of zero? First of all, I need to tell you that this was inspired by a Salesforce MVP named Beth Bryceness in a talk she did in Dreamforce 2014, and she referred to in the middle of a talk as almost a side topic, something called Magical Dashboard of Zeros. And um, we have built on this. It's, it's, a little, it's a little visual automation that you put in place and then you come back to periodically. And it's like uh, an alarm system monitoring for possible automations with your data. It supercharges your ability to know when things are going wrong and to correct it. So um, this is our wall of zero. Uh, and the, it's named because in theory, when I go to my wall of zero once a month, I'm expecting to see all zeros. I'm expecting to see a bunch of components that have no data. Um, the metric is usually the nicest way to do this. Uh, it says zero, 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 zero. But you can see that I have some surprises when I went to my wall of zero at this time. Six, 29, 263, 13, right? So some data that I have claimed should not be a certain way is a certain way. It's become dirty or something has gone wrong. I've got a hole somehow in my security shield of good, sensible data. So um, I'm going to go to work. So how do you do this? Um, First of all, as an admin, I think you're faced with uh, a barrage of requests to develop further, to help people be more efficient, to do dirty work when, when a big job comes along. But part of your job involves receiving phone calls to say, oh my goodness, I found this piece of data that, that you know, doesn't have an account. It's a contact without an account. If, if we have things like that, I don't trust Salesforce and I don't know what to do, right? So you get some kind of a danger message. Often it's threatening, often it's critical or a crisis, or it can be more laid back and just kind of a slow grumbling. Well, I found, I found out there's a bunch of junk in there. Um, you know, we've, we've got a whole bunch of 
leads that don't have any way to contact them. So, so I don't use Salesforce because, you know, that's just, it's just a waste of my time. So when these kinds of messages come to you, you need to respond, and I'm, I'm sure you do, and you'd probably respond by going in and finding one record that's like that to, to validate the problem, and then you probably build a report to find all the data that is like that, and then you probably try to start looking into, well, how is this being created? How is it coming in? How could we prevent it? And maybe it means you go change some system integration or you change some business flow or, you you know, and the problem is gone and, and you're done, right? But the wall of zero wants you to not be done yet. It wants you to keep that report, maybe even construct it a little differently so that it remains useful. Keep that report and put it on the dashboard and come back periodically and make sure that the problem is gone. So um, let's take another look at this at this report. We'll actually look at the one in my in my um, org. So uh, let me move myself over. So close donations without an account source. I want all donations in our org to have a, a field called account source filled out. And it turns out that's a manual thing. And so not everybody does it. You know, I skip it sometimes. And so, but it messes up. At the end of the year, they all have to have account sources or things don't go right for, for a business process. So it's just best we keep that updated. So it's zero now and that's great. Payments should always have payment methods. Um, but but we didn't put in a validation rule because some of them come in through system integration that can't fill it out. So it has to be, it's a combination of manual and filled in as the user makes the data entry. So we didn't put a validation rule on it. And there are three right now that don't have payment methods. So I will click into that report and just change them and it'll be done, right? If this were a bigger or if I were a bigger organization, maybe I would, I would, uh, you know, do something else. Um, contacts with atypical account types. So we have some rules about what we attach contacts to in terms of accounts. And I just, we found that there were some weird ones once upon a time and I built a report and it's been running ever since on my dashboard telling me that it's all still good. And this section, um, and I've got a footnote here that says, hey, this ought to be zero, right? Empty household accounts. Um, Household accounts with no context. Now that's weird, right? So I'm going to click into that to see what's going on because I shouldn't have a household with no accounts. And so I'm going to click into that, look at the report, see what's going on. So we indeed we have one. I need to investigate what went on here. Probably it's a stranded duplicate. Probably somehow this person ended up being a duplicate and we merged it and something went wrong with the cleanup. But I need to take a look because. I don't want my users finding that account that's named after somebody but doesn't have a contact in it, especially if they can find that a duplicate somewhere. All right, duplicate tasks. We assign our duplicate tasks to somebody for cleanup and we expect them to do it fairly rapidly. So we don't want any of them building up. And sometimes we have, you know, users or admins that don't want to do their duplicate assignments. So they start building up and that causes everybody pain. So, you know. So anyway, you get the idea of what we do with this wall of zero. Um, you can use subtitles. Uh, you know, the, the, the dashboard component gives you quite a bit of places to put text. Uh, you can't just put text anywhere, but they actually give you a subtitle and a footer where you can add any explanation, like should be zero. And if, if it turns out it's more complicated than just click into the report and see, if you can record some information about what to do in the sub and the footer also. Um, you can use, if you use metrics, you can add color codes to color code safe ranges, like, you know, four, four duplicate messages is really not a big deal, right? So we may say that's green, but 20 duplicate messages on address is a big deal in a month. So, you know, maybe that's red. Um, and you can organize this in columns and rows. Um, Salesforce Lightning now has up to 12 columns, so you can so you can kind of organize this in ways that make some sense to you, um, and kind of offer some cohesiveness. You still can only put 20 things on a dashboard, 
So, um, you know, that you're, you have some limitations. We actually have two wall of zero dashboards. Um, this is scheduled using, and, and that's something I switch over to classic in order to schedule it because badly you can only schedule five things in Salesforce um, per user and that's not enough for an admin. So I switch over to classic and I schedule this dashboard to be refreshed and sent to me monthly. And I get it and I'm always amazed at what's on it and I go to work cleaning it up. Um, all right, next slide. Uh, since I how do you maintain this? Um, so, you know, work your dashboard regularly. I don't always do it the day I get it, but I, you know, I've got to do it because if I don't, I've got dirty data affecting others and it's piling up. It's work that I have to do eventually. And it's very satisfying to get that back to zero. So um, click into the report. If there's a whole bunch of work to do, consider an automation, or if there's a whole bunch of work to do, uh, consider making a list view that's the equivalent report and using inline mass editing, or of course, use your favorite uh, edit transform ETL tool, edit transform load, mine is Epsona. Um, whenever something comes up, when you get one of these new danger, danger alerts from someone and you saw that, remember to add that dashboard your power of zero because you want to know you know two weeks from now you want it to tell you the problem's still gone because if the problem's still coming back you haven't really solved it and your users aren't going to be happy um so the takeaways every time you have to write a report and solve a problem of dirty data or wrong data or inconsistent data data that violates your policies save that report and start assembling a dashboard um, you can sit down and make a dashboard from scratch, but honestly, um, in my opinion, it's usually these danger things because when somebody comes in and says, I've got this one piece of data that shouldn't be, it's nonsense, you as admin fix that, but you think about, oh, wow, I bet we have three other variations of that same problem, and you can write one report that detects them all, and suddenly you're the hero because you're telling people in the business units actually it's a little bigger than that we should we should fix these things so you want to do that don't overdo it because you know you do have limits of 20 and you you know building a report that never shows anything perhaps that's not all that useful but building a report that shows you you don't have any of the old problems is quite useful maintain your board monitor it Pay attention to the ones that never ever show you anything because they're good candidates for moving to a second board um, because you're probably going to fill your board up with new things and um, you, you may want to keep the newer things on your main board and have a second board that you only refresh and take a look at after you've handled your first board. Um, set goals and work to zero. I have an item that on my dashboard right now that it's something that shouldn't be. And we still haven't actually figured out why it's happening and we haven't fixed it yet. And there's a thousand records that are impacted. It's, it's relatively low impact, but it shouldn't be. And I'm going to solve it, but I, uh, you know, I need to be patient and take my, take, you know, give myself a break on that because there are more urgent things to do. All right. So that's the presentation. Um, please ask questions online. Because you're online and because I think this is a relatively short presentation, we did a bonus. This is one dashboard you should have, wall of zero. Here is another dashboard you should have. And I, this one I'm going to credit myself with coming up. Everybody ought to have this. Uh, if there's a development partner out there that wants to help me make this into a free app, I would be more than happy to do so and put both our names on it. I think everyone should have this. What all this is, is a dashboard that shows how many of each component, I mean, each object that you have uh, on a dashboard. And I know you can see this in setup, but you can't share it in setup with your sponsors and your users. You need to know how many objects you have of different things so you can tell how much you're using. And there's a version of this that shows how your usage has evolved over time. That's even more interesting, but it's not as uh, pleasing and eye candy. So this is the objects we use in my organization. We have 12,000 accounts. We have 11,000 contacts. And unless I looked at this, I would never know that. 
because uh, I, you know, unless I'm having a data storage problem, I probably wouldn't go and set up and look at my data storage. That's kind of how you find out. We have, uh, you know, 7,000 affiliations. We have 2,000 relationships. Uh, we have uh, 1,200 campaigns, but 253,000 campaign members. We have 6,000 donations. We have 50,000 volunteer records. You know, and so when I when I'm wondering what we should optimize, you know, I, I get an idea of what we should do here, right? We create a lot of affiliations. We should make sure that's easy and automatic. Um, we create six thousand donations. That's that's about a thousand a year for us. So, you know, making sure those flow in automatically, but the ones that don't flow in automatically, maybe I don't have to worry about optimizing that process because it's only maybe 200 a year. So it can afford to be a little bit inefficient as long as it's accurate, right? So this can help me as an admin and as a strategist and even as an architect. Um, and I put in black the, the custom objects. I, I left white the standard objects and I put in black the custom objects that we use so I know exactly how many of those are. And in the time variation of this, you can see when we start adopting something more heavily uh, or when some, we stopped using something because the line goes flat, right? So this is a bonus dashboard. It's, I call it the Salesforce adoption bat dashboard. This is the metric based one and there is a graph based one that you can build for yourself. You will not be sorry that you take the time to build this. Um, thanks very much. This is our blog site, mightyforce.org. You should go there. We have blogs and we have videos and uh, we have uh, one or two downloads and our contact information is there. And um, thank you for watching. If you've never built any dashboards, here's a one trail that uh, sort of can walk you through the basics of building a dashboard. Um, the wall of zero just requires you to master the metrics component, which is very simple component, just shows a number uh, from your report, a summary number from your report. So uh, thank you very much. Happy trails, everybody. Be sure and leave us comments or email us questions. Bye.